sound speeds. And if you are a Twitch streamer, a YouTuber, or a podcaster, you're going to want to pay close attention to the product I'm about to share with you. And that is the CAD M179 Studio Condenser Microphone. Most people on Twitch have a microphone around the $400 price point, something like the Shure SM7B. But for half of that price, you can get a microphone that I think rivals it quite well. The microphone itself comes in its own handy dandy carrying case sporting the CAD audio logo on the front. Surprisingly, it has dual locks on the front as well. Opening the box, you find that the microphone itself is not the only thing you get. You also get a shock mount perfectly designed for it. The shock mount itself connects to a standard mic stand, but if you want to use an arm, there is an included adapter, which adapts this standard 5 8 inch 27 thread to a 3 8 inch 16 thread. And if you want to bypass the shock mount altogether, you have that option as well. This microphone is made of all metal. And surprisingly, there's a good amount of weight to it. The build quality is really impressive. There's a 100 hertz bass roll off right here. And on this side, you have a 20 dB pad. But the most impressive feature about this microphone is that it is not just a three, a four, or a five pattern microphone. It is a selectable pattern microphone. You can dial in on an omnidirectional, a wide cardioid, or anywhere in between. Cardioid? Yes, hypercardioid, supercardioid, omnidirectional, you name it. This microphone can do it simply by turning the knob. The one inch diaphragm on the inside of this microphone is the same diaphragm you'll find inside the CAD Equitech E300S microphone. That microphone you can get for around $450, but this one is less than half the price. But how does it sound? I'm going to try to keep my mouth about eight inches off the mic. Now, the diaphragm is in line with this metal band right there. So we'll see if that affects the fidelity. As I slowly start to rotate it around, I'm starting to go in line with the capsule. And as I approach this side, oh, it's starting to lose a little bit of the fidelity through there. I'm sure you can hear that, though. And as I start to move in closer to the back part of the capsule, I'm talking in the back part of it now. You can hear the fidelity returns altogether, but as we start to rotate on around even farther, we'll see if the fidelity starts to drop off again. There it goes a little bit right there along the line of this, this metal band again. So it's not a truly uniform all the way around omnidirectional pattern. But how often are you going to be using a microphone like this for the omnidirectional pattern? Probably not often. Now we're going to do something you can't do on any other microphone. I'm going to slowly start to go off axis over here. And as soon as you would expect my voice to normally drop off, well, let's try dialing in on a wide cardioid pattern. You start to hear my fidelity is going to start dropping off right there. But if I come back, if I want to dial it back in, hey, look, there it comes back in with the omnidirectional. But I'm going to start to dial in a little bit stronger toward the cardioid pattern, a little bit more into the super cardioid pattern. There we are. We're full on. No, we're not. We're That's about cardioid. Now, the fidelity is going to go way up. And let's let's go on power on through some of this. There is the super cardioid pattern. And by now, we should have a little bit of sensitivity back there and full on, oh, listen to that. I'm far away from this microphone. I'm in the back part over here. But it is just, the reach has increased quite substantially. I mean, I'm almost two distances away here at this point. I'm like one and a half. And the fidelity has come way up. This is in super cardioid pattern. I'm going to go back down to the Omni and you're going to see without me even moving, my fidelity is going uh, going down because it's not dialing in specifically on me anymore. It's now in full omni mode. It's trying to hear the entire room. I'm going to dial it back over to the the super cardioid pattern right there. Now I'm going to do the binaural, the stereo, I guess you could almost call it pattern where it's sensitive on this side and it's going to lose a little bit of me as I come around here. Whoa, it's completely off axis. And now as I start to come around the back side of the microphone, there's that fidelity again that we're expecting. Sorry, I popped the mic. Coming back around here, I'm going off axis again. Now I sound like I'm at the end of some room now and I'm back to full fidelity. So you can dial in on exactly what you want. If there is a sound like this right here and I am, uh, let's, let's actually go back to the omnidirectional pattern. Sorry, I'm making all this noise. Geez, there's no real way to do this. If I do this, now if I'm talking, you can still hear that micro uh, the microphone, but you can hear it's picking up my hand over here as well. That's pretty distracting and annoying. But if I start to adjust this microphone, I'm going to go to the cardioid pattern. Actually, no, I'm going to go to the straight at the super cardioid pattern. Now, super cardioid pattern does have this lobe of non-sensitivity, but 
I guess I'm in kind of a small area here. It's com it's it's closed in space. You're able to hear it quite a bit. But if I start to come around full front, there's that fidelity on my hand. I'm going to come around to the back. It's diminished quite a bit. I mean, granted, I'm doing it kind of hard and I'm only a couple inches away from the mic or whatever, a few inches away, not a couple. But you get the idea here. Now, how does this microphone sound with other people's voices? Well, I have my handy dandy six voice test that we're going to run on this. It's going to be a bass voice and a tenor voice, both male. Then we're going to be an alto voice and a soprano voice, female. And then there's a single digit child and a double digit child. So we're going to put those into this microphone and see how it does in comparison with those voices. Jack Dawes love my big sphinx of quartz. Pack my box with five dozen liquor jugs. The quick onyx goblin jumps over the lazy dwarf. How Razorback Jumping Frogs Can Level Six Peaked Gymnasts Jack Dawes Love My Big Sphinx of Quartz Pack My Box With Five Dozen Liquor Jugs The Quick Onyx Goblin Jumps Over the Lazy Dwarf How Razorback Jumping Frogs Can Level Six Peaked Gymnasts Jack Dawes Love My Big Sphinx of Quartz Pack My Box With Five Dozen Liquor Jugs The Quick Onyx Goblin Jumps Over the Lazy Dwarf How Razorback Jumping Frogs Can Level Six Peaked Gymnasts Jack Dawes love my big sphinx of quartz. Pack my box with five dozen liquor jugs. The quick onyx goblin jumps over the lazy dwarf. How razorback jumping frogs can level six peaked gymnasts. Jack Dawes love my big sphinx of quartz. Pack my box with five dozen liquor jugs. The quick onyx goblin jumps over the lazy dwarf. How razorback jumping frogs can level six peaked gymnasts. Jack Dawes love my big sphinx of quartz. Pack my box with five dozen liquor jugs. The quick onyx goblin jumps over the lazy dwarf. How Razorback jumping frogs can level six peaked gymnasts. All in all, I must say I'm very impressed with this microphone. However, I'm probably not going to choose it for my voice. And the reason is I don't have a lot of low end in my voice. I could try to talk very low and my voice starts sounding all crazy. But I do have naturally a lot of high mids and a lot of highs. So this microphone in itself, because it's a very bright microphone, which means it has a lot of higher sounds that it just brings out for crispness. That right there is really good about this microphone but it's not ideal for me. So I'm going to probably continue to stick with the microphone I've been using on this channel, even though I must say this sounds very good. Get this though. This is all a $200 microphone, including the shock mount, including the case and everything. $200. That's, that's nothing for a quality microphone of this, this, I mean, this is amazing to me. Now there's also, as I mentioned before, the 20 dB pad. I click the 20 dB pad and my voice attenuates way down. I mean, I sound like I'm at the other side of the room now. And of course, there is the bass roll off, which is probably not going to sound much different because I don't have a whole lot of stuff down. I don't have a lot of voice down there and below the 100, the 100 hertz marks. So right here, this microphone is doing very well for me. And it's, it's right now currently over, over you know, eight inches away. It's a good foot away, which normally when I'm talking on my channel, my microphone, my CAD E100, the vintage model is about this far away from my mouth. So you can hear that even at this distance, it's doing pretty well on my voice. I mean, this is not quite two full thumbs or two full hands away, but you can tell it's doing very well for what it is. And if I get way up on the microphone, this is where you're really going to hear the bass come out of my voice. This is the proximity effect. And this is when my voice is going to probably sound as deep as you're ever going to hear it. Uh, I don't leverage the proximity effect a whole lot on my voice because... You know, I don't want that artificial part of it. I'd rather use the presence of the natural microphone itself and use that to benefit my voice and my channel. Now, here I am talking directly into the microphone and it's not popping at all. Now, if I want to pop the microphone, I can pop it. But right now I'm talking kind of, whoa, did it again. I can talk off axis just a little bit, which is the way they do it in like NPR radio. They put it about 45 degrees off axis. So let me actually emulate that. It's uh, off to the side of me about 45 degree angle and I'm talking to you right now and I'm not going to ever pop this microphone. So do you need a pop filter? 
Not really if you're doing something like Twitch streaming or you're doing podcasting because I can talk to you and carry on a conversation and this microphone is not right up here next to my mouth and I'm not swallowing the microphone trying to make my voice sound artificially deeper, leveraging that proximity effect. Now, here's another thing I wanted to, to test here with you listening live. If I touch this shock mount, I barely hear anything. Now, I'm going to use the same pressure on the microphone itself. The shock mount does a really good job. I tell you, for $200, you could do a lot worse than this microphone. This microphone sounds pretty good to me. Now, listen to the noise floor. Then I don't hear any, I don't hear like any self noise in this microphone. Surprisingly, it's a very, very good quality microphone. Now, because this has been a product review, you haven't seen a lot of my flashes and, and you know, this isn't as cut up. This is more raw and this is more me testing out something and giving you my full impression of it live. CAD sent me this microphone to test and I'm glad they did because I'm surprised that for a $200 price point, it is a solid microphone. The fidelity is outstanding, especially in its price. I mean, you compare this to a $100 microphone and it's like night and day, but this is on par with $400 microphones and it's probably because that capsule is the same capsule that's found in their $450 CAD Equitech E300S microphone. So all in all, I would say two big thumbs up. Tell me how you think this microphone sounds. Write it down in the description. But in the meantime, I will say tune in to more episodes of Sound Speeds for more product reviews and more sound advice. Have a question you'd like answered or want to add something? Be sure to write it in the comment section down below. You can also make a suggestion for future topics of discussion. Again, comment section down below or you can email me at soundspeeds at yahoo.com. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you won't miss out on future sound advice.